Hi, and welcome to Getting Started with DGraph, Episode 1. DGraph is an open source, transactional, distributed, native graph database. In this first episode, you will learn how to run DGraph, create nodes, create edges between nodes, and then query them back. So let's get started. Running the DGraph standalone Docker image is the quickest way to get started with DGraph. This standalone image is meant for quick start purposes only, so please do not run it in production. Ensure first that Docker is installed and running on your machine. Now it's just a matter of running the following command, and you will have a DGraph database up and running. Notice that we're exposing three different ports, 8000 for the web UI, 8080 for the REST API, and 9080 for the gRPC API. Now that our graph database is running, let's learn how to create a graph. We will learn how to create this graph right here. You will have two nodes, Anne and Ben, and they're connected by the relationship follows. In a graph database, concepts or entities are represented as nodes, maybe PSL, a transaction, a place, or a person. All of those entities are represented as nodes in a graph database. An edge, on the other hand, represents the relationship between two nodes. The two nodes in this graph represent two people, Anne and Ben. You can also see that these nodes have two associated properties, name and age. These properties of the nodes are called predicates in the graph. N follows Ben. The follows edge between them represents the relationship. The edge connecting two nodes is also called a predicate in the graph, although this one points to another node rather than a string or integer as before. You might remember that we mentioned port 8000 was exposed for a web UI, so let's go see what's in there. This the graph web UI is called Rattle and you can access it by visiting localhost 8000. First, you can choose what version of Rattle you want to run. Now, I recommend going latest all of the time because that's basically the latest stable release. But if you want to avoid connecting to the internet, you can also use local bundle and that will use directly the one that was downloaded with the graph database. In this case, the one that is inside of the Docker image. Finally, if you want to try some new cool features, you can try out dev. But be aware that it is not always stable and you might encounter some issues sometimes. So let's create that graph. The create, update, and delete operations in the graph are called mutations. And Rattle makes it quite easy to run them. We'll be exploring more of its features along with the tutorial series. But for now, let's get started with a very simple mutation. Let's go first to the mutate tab and write a new mutation. Mutations can be in RDF or JSON format. And we're going to be using JSON format today. We can create the two nodes that we mentioned previously by creating this mutation with set, which contains an array of all of the nodes we want to create. For every node, we give the fields and the values we want to assign. So here we're creating Anne, who is 28 years old, and Ben, who is 31. So at this point, this mutation creates two nodes. However, it does not create an edge between these nodes, but a small modification of this mutation will fix it. So it creates an edge in between them. Now, as you can see, we're creating the node Ben inside of a follows relationship coming from Anne. So now we know that Anne has the name Anne, age 28, and follows Ben, who is 31. So let's execute this mutation, and there you go. You can see now on the response panel that two UIDs have been created. UIDs are universal identifiers, and they uniquely identify nodes in the graph database. The two values in the UADs field in the response correspond to the two nodes created for N and Ben. Now let's try to get back those nodes that we just created by using a query in the query panel. The query language of dgraph is based on GraphQL. Now it is not exactly GraphQL because it has some additions to make it more suitable for a query language for a graph database. And also there are some of the things that are part of GraphQL that were removed. This is why we call it GraphQL plus minus, because it's more or less GraphQL. That said, a GraphQL compliant API will be coming up later this month. So check out our blog post or follow us on Twitter to keep up to date. As in GraphQL, our query has a name. In this case, we call it people. We call this a query block and its name, it's completely up to you. I recommend using something meaningful. So in this case, since we're fetching people, I call it people. The same name will be used in the JSON response so you can find the answer corresponding to your query. Now that we have a name for the query, let's start by finding the nodes that we want to start with. For this, we use the func parameter. The func parameter has to be associated with the built-in function of dgraph. 
and dgraph offers a wide list of built-in functions. We're going to be using the has function, for which you can check the documentation on docs.dgraph.io. You will find all of the nodes that have a predicate of the name associated to their UID. Last, we define what predicates we want to fetch for those nodes. So we're saying we want to fetch name and age. So now that we've typed the query, let's click Run and see what happens. Rattle renders a graph visualization of the result. Just clicking one of the nodes and notice that the nodes are assigned UIDs, matching the ones we saw in the imitation's response. You can also view the JSON result in the JSON tab on the right. This is the JSON that you will receive if you were using one of our clients directly rather than the Rattle. Pause the video and try to guess the following. How would you find all of the nodes that follow someone and the name of those followed? Did you really pause the video? I hope so, because here comes the answer. You can use func has follows. And then inside, you can fetch the name of the person that is following others, then follows, and inside of follows, you can also fetch the name. This will return all of the names of the people followed by this node, plus the name of the node. You may have noticed we have not talked about schema at all. And that's normal. On dgraph, schemas are built as you need them. So now we can go to the schema tab and see that indeed we have name, age, and follows created as predicates. You can even see the type they have. Let's send another mutation and see what happens if I add more. So in here, for instance, I'm going to add two more people. These two people are actually part of the team. Balaji, based in India, and Daniel, who lives in San Francisco. Now we're creating two nodes. The first one has name, age, and country, but the second one has name, age, and city. You can go back to the schema and see that now we have two more predicates, country and city. dgraph will create new predicates as they appear in your mutations. This flexibility can be beneficial, but if you prefer to force mutations to follow a given schema, there are options available that we will explore in an upcoming episode. So let's wrap up. In this episode, we learned the basics of dgraph, including how to run the database, create new nodes and predicates, and querying them back. Before we wrap up, here's some quick bits from the next episode. Did you know that nodes can also be fetched given the UID? UIDs can also be used to create an edge between existing nodes. Does that sound interesting? Then see you all in the next episode. Till then, happy graphing.